Sometimes we cannot see it, we cannot feel it, or we doubt that it is even there. And we'll learn more about that in the sermon and the readings for today. The service is printed in your worship folder, and we begin with our first hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. Rejoice that those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. How lovely is your dwelling place, Lord Almighty. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, they are ever praising you. The Lord is near to all who call on him. To all who call on him in truth. Let us confess our sins to God and ask for his forgiveness. Almighty God, merciful Father, I confess to you that I have not loved you with my whole heart. In what I have done and left undone, I have pursued my ways instead of your ways. I have not loved others as you command. For this I deserve your punishment, now and forever. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Cleanse me from my sins. Release me from my guilt. Grant me your Holy Spirit to live a new life. Jesus. 
Jesus says to his people, if you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. Do you believe this? Yes, yes I believe. believe. By the command of the Lord Jesus, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and most merciful God, the protector of all who trust in you, strengthen our faith and give us courage to believe that in your love you will rescue us from all adversities. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We begin now our look at the scripture lessons for this Sunday, beginning with 2 Kings chapter 6, where, again, the Lord promises us his presence, and in this case, the servant of Elisha cannot see what the Lord is doing, and so he gets a, a wonderful revealing of all that the Lord is doing on behalf of his servant. Now when the king of Aram was waging war against Israel, he would make plans with his officials saying, my camp will be at such and such a place. But the man of God would send a message to the king of Israel saying, be careful when you pass this place because the Arameans are going down there. So the king of Israel would send scouts to the place that the man of God had pointed out. So the man of God warned him, and he was kept safe, and not just once or twice. The king of Aram was enraged because of this. He summoned his officials and said to them, Won't you tell me who of us is for the king of Israel? One of his officials said, No, my lord the king, it is Elisha the prophet in Israel who tells the king of Israel the words which you speak in your bedroom. Then he said, Go and see where he is. Then I'll send men and capture him. He was told Dothan is where he is. So he sent horses and chariots and a strong force there. They came at night and surrounded the city. When the man of God's servants got up early and went out, there were soldiers, horses, and chariots surrounding the city. So his attendant said to Elisha, Oh no, my lord, what will we do? He answered, Don't be afraid, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Then Elisha prayed and said, O oh Lord, open his eyes so that he can see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eye, and he saw that the hills were full of of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is the Mighty Fortress Psalm, Psalm 46, and we speak it responsibly. God is our refuge and strength. Help and always be found in times of trouble. That is why we will not fear when the earth dissolves. And when the mountains tumble into the heart of the sea. Its waters roar and foam. The mountains sway when it rises. There is a river. Its streams bring joy to the city of God. To the holy dwelling of the Most High. God is in her. She will not fall. God will help her at daybreak. Nations are in turmoil. Kingdoms fall. God raises his voice. The earth melts. The Lord of armies is with us. God of Jacob is a fortress for us. Come, look at the works of the Lord. What a wasteland he has made of the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He shatters the bow. He cuts out the spear. He burns the carts with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. The Lord of armies is with us. God of Jacob is a fortress for us. 
Continuing now in God's Word with our second lesson from 2 Timothy chapter 4. Even though Paul seems all alone, he takes comfort in the presence of the Lord. You see, I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness. The Lord, the righteous judge, will give it to me on that day, and not only to me, but also to everyone who loved his appearing. At my first hearing, no one came to my defense, but everyone deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and strengthened me, so that through me the message would be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles would hear it, and I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil work and will bring me safely into his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Be to God. We speak responsibly the gospel acclamation for the day from Mark chapter 6. They all saw him and were terrified. Immediately, he spoke with them and said, Take courage, it is I, do not be afraid. And we hear those words and meditate on those words in our gospel lesson from Mark chapter 6. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go ahead to the other side, to Bethsaida, while he himself dismissed the crowd. After he had sent them off, he went up the mountain to pray. When it was evening, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and Jesus was alone on the land. He saw them straining at the oars, because the wind was against them. About the fourth watch of the night, he went to them, walking on the sea. He was ready to pass by them. When, he saw, when they saw him walking on the sea, they thought he was a goat, and they cried out. They all saw him and were terrified. Immediately he spoke with them and said, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then he climbed up into the boat with them, and the wind stopped. They were completely amazed, because they had not understood about the loaves. Instead, their hearts were hardened. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they stepped out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran around that whole region and began to bring sick people on their stretchers to where they heard he was. Wherever he entered, villages, cities, or the countryside, they were laying sick people in the marketplaces and pleading with him that they might just touch the edge of his garment. And all who touched it were made well. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, o Christ. We sing our next hymn, 803, Day by Day.
mighty Lord is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen. The word of God that we consider in today's sermon is the gospel lesson from Mark chapter 6. Dear friend, everyone had their fill and was satisfied. 5,000 men and who knows how many women and children had a hearty meal with five loaves and two fish provided by Jesus. No one had seen anything like it before, but the magnitude of something so miraculous was not lost on this great crowd. In fact, this crowd of 10,000, maybe even 15,000, had one goal in mind after they had been fed. St. John's Gospel records that Jesus realized they were going to make him king by force. The people had confessed, this really is the prophet who is coming into the world. However, their view of the prophet long foretold was not of one who would save them spiritually, not of one who would make things right with God, their view was more physical and nationalistic, as their religious leaders taught them. If Jesus can keep our bellies full, then he most certainly can defeat the Roman scourge and restore us to national prominence and pride. I suppose you could say Jesus could have run on an ancient version of Herbert Hoover's campaign slogan, a chicken in every pot, and two cars in every garage. The people were with, with him, no question. He could have said and done anything his human heart desired. He had them literally, literally, eating out of the palm of his hand. As strong as that temptation was, Jesus did not give in. He stayed true to the plan of salvation. But what about his disciples? Had they heard the people murmuring about their plan and Jesus' forced kingship while gathering up the leftovers? Knowing their discussions in Scripture with Jesus about greatness in the kingdom of heaven, were they all for it? hoping Jesus would give them the positions, the highest positions of power and prestige? Or was it just simply a matter of 12 men versus a large crowd, a mob of thousands, trying not to get pushed aside, trying to protect Jesus, trying not to get run over? Whatever the reason Jesus says to them, get into the boat and go across the Sea of Galilee while I dismiss the crowds. Perhaps he disclosed to them his plans to pray privately on the mountainside and join them later. Maybe the disciples were a little hesitant to leave Jesus by himself. And maybe as they walked from the grassy plains to the sandy shoreline, they kept looking behind them, looking to see if Jesus was truly coming, truly on his way. Perhaps they decided to wait Jesus out for a little bit before shoving off. Now, remember, remember that among these 12 disciples are Andrew, Peter, James, and John, four experienced fishermen. Sailing in the night hours was no sweat. In fact, it was prime time to catch fish as they had come closer to the surface for more of uh, the light. So it's easy to see these four specifically taking charge. With smooth sailing, they should be able to reach Bethsaida in no time flat. However, a fierce squall 
comes up. Not at all uncommon, but this one was so bad that they couldn't make much progress. Mark records he, that is Jesus, saw them straining at the oars because the wind was against them. What was supposed to take only a few hours ended up taking a lot longer. Another gospel writer states that they were only three or four miles out from, from shore. Back to the Gospel of Mark, which says about the fourth watch of the night, that is, between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., he went to them, walking on the sea. He was ready to pass by them. When they saw him walking on the sea, they thought he was a ghost, and they cried out. They all saw him and were terrified. The boat was violently tossed by winds and waves, taking on water, the sail wasn't helping, the oars were not helping, four experienced fishermen were not helping. In fact, when you start seeing ghosts on the Sea of Galilee, Jewish legend said that spelled your doom. This was it. They were going to go down to the bottom, never to be seen again, never to see Jesus again. Except this ghost that walked effortlessly on that lake turned to them. Almost passing them, Jesus calls out, Take courage. It is I. Don't be afraid. We don't know what Jesus' intention was in almost passing the boat. Was he waiting for someone to exercise their faith and say to the others, Come on, guys, that is Jesus. Let us follow him to the, the rest of the way, all the way to the other shore. Were they supposed to simply stand tall in the storm, seeing Jesus and knowing that all things were under his control. Any response, any response would have been better than just being terrified. Mark's gospel, if you notice, doesn't even give the little detail about Peter getting out and walking on the water toward Jesus, like the gospel of Matthew does. And there's a little cheeky humor among Bible scholars about that particular omission. You see, the Gospel of Mark is nicknamed the Gospel of Peter, which is to say that Mark is hearing these events and writing them down from the mouth of the Apostle Peter. Could it be that Peter was still, in his older age, a little embarrassed? He did start to sink. Jesus had to grab him and rescue him. How long did the other disciples kid him about that? Peter's boldness often got him into trouble. The truth is, they all share blame for their lack of trust. Mark closes the episode on the sea by saying, Then he climbed up into the boat with them, and the wind stopped. They were completely amazed, because they had not understood about the loaves. Instead, their hearts were hardened. The Gospel of Matthew adds that the disciples worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Well, how can that be? How can the disciples have hard hearts and still confess Jesus is the Son of God? Well, it's the same situation in your heart and mine. We confess that Jesus is the Son of God. And yet, you and I still sometimes have a terrible problem 
remembering that out in the world as we meet challenges and difficulties. We've been there when our faith is, has somehow been lacking. When moving forward did not include trust in the Savior. It could be feeling financial strain. It could be seeing the struggle of a loved one's poor health. It could be taking in the upheaval of, of the world around us. It could be wrestling with our own internal fears like rejection, loneliness, or death. Why do we suffer these things? Why do we suffer these things and from these things even though we know Jesus is the Almighty Son of God? The answer is, we're sinners. We are sinners, which means we are prone to steering our own course in our own boat without the help of anybody. But we can easily become terrified like those first disciples when the winds start blowing and the waves start rising. We can forget all that we have been told. We can forget all that we have learned about the Savior. We rant and we rave and we run like a chicken with its head cut off. We say, where is Jesus? I can't see him. I can't feel his presence. It's embarrassing. We feel dumb for not knowing better at the time. However, what does the Savior say? Take courage. It is on. Don't be afraid. Before he ascended into heaven, Jesus also said, Surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And that promise is as true today as it ever was. Jesus is with you in all trouble, leading you, piloting you through the calm and choppy waters of life. He is more than willing to let you know it. This is not so he can chide you mercilessly or keep you at an arm's length for not trusting him. It's so he can draw you closer to himself so that you can anchor in his everlasting security. He knows. He knows your faith isn't always flame on when it's being tested. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't mean, brothers and sisters, he's going to leave you to toss and turn and drown. Jesus could have done that. He could have done that with his first disciples right then and there, considering all that they had heard him say, considering all that they had seen him do. Yet he climbs into the boat, and instantly things are calm. They land, they anchor, and Jesus continues his ministry. As soon as they stepped out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran around the whole region and began to bring sick people to their in, on their stretchers to where they heard he was. Wherever he entered villages, cities, or the countryside, they were laying sick people in the marketplaces and pleading with him that they might just touch the edge of his garment. And all who touched it were made well. Yes, it, it must have been embarrassing, not just for Peter, but for all of the disciples. How their lack of faith stung their consciences as they saw person after person after person trusting Jesus could heal them. Although, the disciples were receiving a benefit, too, from Jesus' work. They were being reminded, while Jesus was teaching while Jesus was healing, they were being reminded that this is the Savior. This is the one. 
This is the one who has power over blindness, deafness, muteness, leprosy, and infirmity. Their weak faith was being strengthened. They were being assured beyond a shadow of a doubt. Jesus can feed the hungry. Jesus can still any storm. Jesus can stand above sin and all of its consequences. It's the same assurance that you receive every time you go back into the Word of God and meditate on His promises to you. It's the same confidence boost of faith that you get when you feast on the Lord's Supper. Jesus can conquer anything and everything for me. Jesus has conquered anything and everything for me. He conquered at the cross, winning you forgiveness for your sins of terrified doubt, for your sins of slowness to recall just how precious you are to him. He shares his victory at the empty tomb with you, promising to you an open heaven, even when you are alone, even when you feel that it is one versus the world. Jesus is still by your side through thick and thin. You are still under his protection as you face dangers to your body, as you face persecutions to your faith. You are still cared for in the midst of political unrest and bad news cycles. You are still his, even as you must go through the door of death to receive your eternal inheritance that will never perish, never spoil, and never fade. So take courage. Take courage. Jesus is your refuge and strength and ever-present help in all times of trouble. Do not be ashamed to run to him. Do not be afraid to hold on to him. Even though the earth gives way and the mountains fall. Remember that. Remember that. Let the Savior tell you that again and again and again. He tells you that in his word so that you are refreshed again and again and again. So that you know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Jesus is with you. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which surpasses all of our human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess that Christian faith today using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We continue now with the responsive prayer of the church, and at the appropriate time of special intercessions, we give thanks to God. We give thanks to God for protecting and beginning to heal uh, his servant, Katie Jans, who did receive her liver transplant and is recovering well. A long road ahead in that recovery, but we give thanks and praise to God. We pray. 
Lord Almighty, presence with all your people, still our troubles, our troubled hearts, and teach us to know that you are powerful over all. Lord of hosts, you are our refuge and our fortress. Calm our hearts when we are discouraged with what we see in our world. Through your word, open our eyes to your power and plan as you work all things for the good of those who love you. Dwell among us and help us. Let your name be exalted in all the earth. Let your word gladden people's hearts as they hear your gospel, believe it, and find peace in you. Let them be still and know that you are God. Give us good and wise leaders who know and work for what is right. Give all citizens of our land the desire to work together for the common good. May we bow before you that you may be exalted. Look on your people around the world who are persecuted for their faith in you. Be at their side and give them strength. Rescue them from every evil attack. And at last, bring us all to your heavenly kingdom. Help them keep the faith and run the race marked out for them. Your son healed the sick with a touch or with a word. In your mercy, give healing to those who suffer pains of mind or body. Sustain us until we stand before you. Lord of hosts, you are our refuge and our fortress. Dwell among us and help us. Heavenly Father, who hears and answers all our prayers for Jesus' sake, we humbly thank and praise you that you have heeded the prayers of your servants concerning Katie Jans. You have made her surgery successful and even now are granting her the gracious balm of healing. Daily improve her health, and finally make her recovery complete. Meanwhile, restore her strength in sufficient measure, so that she may return home to her family, and finally even to the work that you have called her to do. Hasten that special day when she can once again take her place with us, joining our voices with her own, praising you for your grace and goodness. Restored in body and renewed in spirit, may she serve you faithfully in righteousness and godliness all the days of her life, living by the faith of your Son, Jesus Christ, who loved us all and gave himself for us. May we join her in thus serving you. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. And now listen, Lord, to the thoughts and cares of our own hearts in moments of silent prayer. Almighty God, you sent your Son from heaven to be the bread of life. Grant that when we come to him, we never hunger, and believing in him, we never thirst. And by remaining in him and he in us, we may have eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the Almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. We sing our final hymn today, Jesus, Savior, Pilot Me.
and good morning. And welcome again, once and all, welcome to the guests who are with us, and a pleasure to worship with you uh, today. All the announcements are concerning VBS, which is this week. Please keep that ministry in your prayers. The sign-up sheets uh, for the ingredients that we still need has been brought out and placed on the table. Uh, please, if you have the time, um, the volunteers will be meeting at 2 p.m. on Tuesday to make sure everything's prepared and set, so there's still a little time for you to go shopping and, and pick up some items if, if you so choose. But uh, again, please keep this ministry, only our second year, keep it uh, in your prayers that it may succeed. We are very, very thankful that that uh, uh, we do have children coming to, to be at the feet of their Savior. And we also uh, pray and thank God for the nice weather that seems to be accompanying those three days as we have our uh, Olympic theme. Also, just a... a uh, Notice in the bulletin that instead of meeting today with, with the meeting of the boards, we'll meet next Sunday. There is a little business that came through the mail that we need to take care of in accordance to what's happening uh, to this particular uh, street next year uh, that we need to sign away uh, and give them permission to do. So we'll do that uh, next week before, uh, before we send it back to them. I believe that's everything I, I have for you. You go and you go with the presence of God always. That promise is forever true. Surely I am with you always until the very end of the age. And he's even with us at the end of the age because that's when eternity starts. And we will be with him there forever. Have a good and blessed week.